We continue with the last video in the Stuhl series. This time it's going to be about verbs, about uh, the different verb forms and when they have Stuhl and when they don't. This video is a bit longer than the others in the series because there's a lot of information about verbs and Stuhl. Welcome back to Mixed Languages. I am Mick. And in this last part of the Stuhl series, we're going to talk about verbs. Let's start by looking at verbs that can be, uh, that ha can have a present tense form, a conjugated form of the present tense, and a form of a person. For example, jeg maler. Jeg maler. I paint. Maler. Maler. In maler. A painter. Right? So, the present tense form here, the conjugate present tense form, ending in er in Danish always, normally all, in, most of the time, has to mailer, whereas the person, the painter in this case, does not have to mailer. The same happens in taber, taber. I, he, she, it, you lose, ja taber, and the loser, taber. The same with Winner, winner, right? To win, I win, you win, and so on. Ja, winner, du winner. Ja, ein winner, winner, no still. And here also with fryser, fryser. Fryser is to freeze or just to be cold. And fryser is the freezer. Fiskne fryser, hvis du lægger dem i fryseren. Fiskne fryser, hvis du lægger dem i fryseren. This happens in uh, several other verbs, but there are also exceptions where it doesn't happen. For example, elsker. For example, elsker, the verb. Elsker, the person. Elsker is like a lover. Uh, right, so elsker and elsker. We don't say elsker, even though we in theory could, because there are stud bases. There are stud bases here in the L sound, elsker. But we don't do that. We say elsker, elsker. The same with spiller, spiller. Now let's talk about the different verb forms. In Danish, we have five different verb forms that are really like different. That have different endings. We have the infinitive form normally ending in E. We have the imperative form, the order form, do that, come here, which normally is the same as the infinitive, but without E. Then we have the present tense, nutid, presence. We have the datid, the past tense. And we have the past participle, which we, for example, use in the present perfect form. And we're going to look at each of these forms, and we're going to look at the rules for when there is still and when there's not still. Once we have looked at the rules, we're going to look at some specific verbs and take them through all of these five uh, forms and apply the rules that we have established. So it's a very hands-on real life in the end. But first, the rules. I also must say that it is sometimes a bit random in the verbs if there is still or not. So it's kind of, you know, it's not that easy to make rules. But I've made some rules that are uh, that you can trust most of the time. So, let's uh, start by looking at the past tense. Datid, preteritum. When the form ends without an E, we have stu. For example, holt, which is like held, I held something, holt. When the form ends with an E, we do not have stu. For example, kypte, which can also be pronounced kypt. Yeah, crypt in a uh, new computer ago. Exceptions. Right, we just said that there is no still when the word when the form ends in an E. This is not true for the verbs that end in E R E in the infinitive. For example, regere, genere. These all have still in all of their forms, in all five forms. So for example, the past tense form will be here. Regere. And 
regerer something like uh, to rule a country for example regeret and generet right there stood here regeret g regeret generte generte now let's look at the past participle if the if the past participle form ends in et we do not have stood for example plantet jeg har plantet et træ if it ends in just a t without et without e we have stood spist spist and again we have exceptions um the ere -E words regeret right they end in et but anyway they still have stood regeret and we also have one syllable words they also have stood seat they're stood here even though they end in et skate stood and then there's also an exception the other way around for where they should have stood according to a rule here right they end in just a t not et but they do not for example set brugt vist bragt haft sagt for all of these they all have one thing in common which is they do ha not have stood basis right remember stood basis from the first video in the series the sounds here right first of all we have short vowels which normally gives us no stood they all have short vowels short vowel sounds and then we have the consonants here they are not part of the stood basis so we cannot have stood here that is why we do not have stood in these forms so this shows again the importance of the idea of the stood basis for us to understand when stood is a thing and when it isn't a possibility Now let's look at the next form, the infinitive, where, right, the infinitive in Danish normally ends in an E, and we remember the E rule, which tells us that words ending in an E normally do never have still. That's the case here as well. So hardly any infinitive forms have still. Just two examples here quickly. Køre, spise or spies, which is more normal to say in this, within the sentence, without the E, right, spies. But we have exceptions here, and we have cases where there is still in the infinitive. This is often the case in one-syllable words that end in a vowel sound. Få, stod, gå, ske, gi, right, gi in modern Danish is pronounced in one syllable, even though it's kind of written in two, give, we normally say gi, gi, stød, ha, ta, ha and ta I'm going to talk about in the end again, because we could also say them without stød, but here ha and ta has stød. And of course, we also again have the exception of the words that end in ere, regere, genere, all of these words, kommunikere, have stød in all of their forms. Next verb tense is the imperative. In the first video in the series, I already talked about uh, the fact that imperative no normally always has stud, but there are some exceptions. For example, come. I don't say come. Um, that's kind of, why is that? Come could also be the past tense form. Preteritum, that's it. Come, she came, he came. And uh, that has stud. So maybe that's why we do not put stood in the imperative form to make a difference to to differentiate between these two forms. Also, the word gør does not have stud. We could in theory say gør, but we don't. We say gør. And then other examples where we do not have stud basis: test, cast. No stud basis here. Short vowels, so we cannot have stud on the vowel. And uh, then the consonants here. S and D do not have stud basis, are not part of the stud basis. Test, cast. But if we look at the word host, we have stud. Here we have a long vowel, O, so we have stud. Host. And now the last uh, verb tense, which is present tense, nutil, presence, which uh, is a bit more difficult to talk about. There's, it seems more random here. But I would say that. Uh, it's more normal to have stood here than not to have it. 
um, I've looked at maybe like a hundred of the most uh, used Danish verbs, and mm, more than fifty percent have stood. The ones that do not have stood in the present tense are, for example, køre, svar, høre. So all of these verbs that have uh, er, -E -R in the end, køre, svar, høre, and they have only um, two syllables, I guess, høre, that would be two syllables, right? Yeah, høre, they uh, do not have stood. But again, right, we remember, we already talked about genere, regere, they have stood because they have stood in all forms. And then, for example, we also do not have stood in tester, caster, because there is no stood basis here. Okay, that part was maybe a bit boring here, the rules, me telling you the rules. Now let's together look at, the, at some specific verbs and let's apply the rules. We can start with koste. Koste is a word that has no stud at all in any form because it has no stud basis, right? The vowel here, a, is a short vowel, no stud, and the s and the d sound, right? The t is a more like a d, pronounced like a t, are not part of the stud basis. So we have the five forms here. I'm starting with the infinitive, koste, or cost, we could also say cost in the sentence. Then we have the imperative here, cost, cannot have stud because there's no stud basis. Costa, present tense, costal, past tense, ha costal, for example, the present perfect, ha costal. But as I already talked about, right, the word host does not have stud in any form except the imperative. Whenever there's a possibility of having stud in the imperative, verbs normally have it. So in this case, we would have host, host. Stood on the vowel here. Hoster, hostel, hostel. And uh, the same happens with the word spille, spille, spill, spiller, spillet, spillet. And uh, let's take an example sentence here. Spill, det her spill. Here we see the difference between the imperative form spill and the noun spill, which means game. Spill, det her spill. Now let's look at the verb holde. Holde, infinitive form, normally no stud if it ends in an e. Imperative, hold. Holder. The present again, it's difficult to talk about rules. Then we have the past tense hold, ending in a t not ending in an E, so there is still. And the past participle, halt, the same. Not ending in ET, but ending in T, so there is still, halt. Next verb, følge. Infinitive, følge. Føl. Imperative, we can have stud, and we do. Present tense, følger. Past tense, fulde, or fuld. Here we have the rule again, right? It ends in an E, so we do not have stud. The last form, the past participle, fult, ends in a T, not an ET, so we have stud. Fult. Jeg har fult hende i flere måneder, right? Whatever, you follow somebody uh, on uh, YouTube, for example. Jeg har fult hende i flere måneder. Next verb, få. Infinitive, we talked about this already here, få, stud. Fo, imperative form, fo, fo, present tense, fik, past tense, stud, fo, fo, does not have stud, it ends in et. And now let's look at the verb hey, to have. Hey, infinitive, stud, hey, it's a one syllable word with a long vowel, hey, but we can also pronounce the infinitive form. Ha. Ha does not have stud. Ha. Right? So, ha. Ha. Um, that is because on the vowel sound, a, in Rysdansk, in normal Danish, there is never going to be stud. Right? So, ha. Ha, stud. Ha, no stud. The same happens in the imperative, because we, have, we can have the same two pronunciations here. Ha, in god day. Ha, in god day. 
Ha' en god dag. And then we have uh, ha, which can also actually have stød and no, and no stød. Ha, jeg har en cykel, for eksempel. And then we could also imagine this uh, form with no stød. Ha, ha. Let me give you an interesting uh, sentence in, the, in a few seconds for you to see. Then we have the past tense. Had, ending in e. Had. And then we have uh, the past participle haft, no stood again. Why is that? It ends in a T, not an ET, it should have stood. But no, there is no stood basis. Haft. Now let's look at the following two sentences that are super nice. They kind of make it all fit together. A lot of what we've talked about in these videos about the stood. Let's look at them here. Jaha, svaret. Jeg har svaret. Jeg har svaret. So, the first sentence. Jeg har svaret. I have answered. We do not have stood not in ha and also not in svaret. Let's first look at svaret. Svaret is the past participle form of svaret. And it ends in an et, so we write our rule tells us there is no stood here. Svaret. And uh, we have the verb ha. Hasval, right? Here, what happens? We need, to, we need to look at the at the stress of the sentence, kind of. Which word is stressed here? It's only the word sval. It's not the word ha. So again, that's also an important part of the stu. If there's no stress, I talked about that in the first video. If there's no stress on the syllable. In this case, on the whole word ha. There is no stu. Ja hasval. Whereas we have ja ha sval. Here. We have to stress the word ha, and we put stud in it because of that. Ha, that's a normal, that's a normal kind of uh, present tense form of ha, ja ha, with stud. And then we have uh, sval. Remembering what we talked about in the video on the nouns, we said that if we have stud in the basic form without article, sva, right, we have stud here, sva. Then we also have it in the form with the definite article, sval. So that's why we have stud here, right? So we have a sentence with no stud at all, ja har sval, and a sentence with two stud here, ja har sval. The reason why we in the first sentence, ja har sval, do not stress the ha, that has to do with uh, generally verbs and composite verbs, you know, different verbs together. How are they pronounced? How are they stressed? Where, which of the verbs is stressed? That's uh, there's. There are some very, very clear rules in Danish that are very important, right? If you want to know about that, let me know, and I might at some point make a video about it. Quickly, the last thing here before we end is verbs that have the prefix be, for, er, one of these three prefixes, because they have a specific way of being pronounced. So whenever we have a, one of these two, three prefixes, we have stood in all of the forms. If there is stud basis, of course. For example, let's uh, compare here a word that has the prefix and one that doesn't. We could take begrau to bury. Begrau versus grau. Right? Grau is to dig. And begrau is to dig and put soil on top of something. Right? Begrau, grau. Grau does not have stud. It fits our normal rule. Begrau has stud, right? We don't say begrau. Begrau, we say begrau. So it has stud. Imperative form has stud in both, right? Imperative normally always has. So if we have begrau, grau. Then we have the present tense begrauer and grauer. We have the past tense form begraul and graul, right? We don't say begrau, begrau. We say begraul. And that again, right, uh, the word growl follows our rule. The word begraul has stood because all forms of the words that have the prefix be have stood. And the uh, present, uh, the past participle, begraul, growl. The same, let's look at the word behandle here. Same happens here. Behandle has stood in all forms. Behandle is to treat. Handle is to, it can be different things. It can be to act in a certain way. It can also be to buy groceries. 
to go grocery shopping. So we have behandle, behandle, behandler, behandled, behandled. Whereas we do not have stood here, handle. We have stood here, handle. We do not have stood here, handler, and not handled, and not handle. One more and last verb with a prefix with the prefix for. You could look at for elske versus elske. For elske versus elske, right? For elske, elske, you already hear here. For elske, they're stood on the el, on the el for, uh, sound here. And elske does not have stood. For elske, elske. For elsk, elsk, for elsker, elsker, for elsket, elsket, for elsket, elsket. Okay, so I wanted to include this, these verbs with be, for, er, they are different from all other verbs. They are also different in the way they are stressed compared to verbs with other prefixes. For example, if we have a word like, um, uh, oversed, oversed to translate. Oversed has stress on the first part here on the prefix. Oversed. Many verbs have that stress in the prefix. But these verbs we just talked about, be for er, have stress on the second syllable always. For elske, right? I don't say for elske. I don't say behandle. I say behandle. So they are special, and they're also special with regards to the stud. <laughs> That was uh, all I have to say about the stool. I hope that you learned a lot in this series. I hope you uh, are now more, you know, in tune with the stool and understand it better, understand when to use it, understand how it sounds. Maybe you can also pronounce it. Let me know if you have difficulties. I might even make a video on how to learn to say it correctly. And uh, I thank you very much for your attention. And I thank you also for the likes you give the videos and the uh, comments you send. If you have questions, if you like the video, if you didn't like it, whatever uh, feedback you have, let me know. I'm very interested in hearing your feedback. All right. This was Mixed Languages. Stud. Vi ses en anden gang. Ha det godt.